Now, ever since the Supreme Court's Citizens United case opened the floodgates to unfettered campaign spending, wealthy donors and companies, they've been spending huge amounts of money. And the list of donors dominated by just a handful of families. Time Story Today saying that half the money donated from the 16 race has come from, get this, only 158 families. And as you can see in this graphic, the vast majority of those families, they are Republicans. And a breakdown by industry shows it's topped off by finance guys with energy, real estate, media, health, and tech rounding out the top six fields. You were there firsthand. Well, there's always been money in politics, but it seemed that it was a little slow after Citizens United, but by the second and third and now more election cycles since, uh, they've kind of really game the system here and it's don't you think the regular taxpayer at home would be shocked at just how much influence limited hands have in government uh, there's certainly a tremendous effect of big money on elections it makes your work harder so if you've been doing the people's business and, and you have a, a good approval rating on from both sides of the aisle and and people spend a fortune of money from outside of the state yep. on independent expenditures in your campaign. It's something you have to raise money to fight against, and it's a great distraction. But they kind of professionalize it, right? Like with Alec, for example, they literally wrote the legislation. They said, "Okay, here, submit it, and get a bunch of names on it." Well, you know, I think it, elected officials often get a bad rap. Most of them are there to do the right thing, and they don't lie, and they don't <coughs> cheat, and they don't steal. And uh, most of them uh, try to follow their conscience as often mm. as possible. Um, so I don't think money necessarily has the influence, uh, except on the national level, which is what we're talking about now in this presidential election. Um, this money is going to affect uh, legislation down the road, and it is highly dangerous. One of my first bills that I introduced when I was a member of Congress was to amend the Constitution of the United States, because <coughs> I knew that was the only way to get around uh, the decisions of the Supreme Court that otherwise uh, wouldn't limit campaign spending yep. either by an individual or by a group. Uh, we didn't get enough signatures to get it even on the floor. <laughs> but it is, it is shameful. At the end of the day, though, the American people will get the government that they deserve and that they want and that they're willing to come out and vote for. And uh, that's what we should be fighting for. You think the public cynical enough about this? Do you think they're just resigned to it? I mean, you've seen polls and, and how money and politics. I think they got the feeling that what can I do? You know, it's a rigged system, and the only thing I can do is vote on the first Tuesday in November. Yeah, I mean, it, unfortunately, people don't go to the polls and vote on these kind of structural issues. So I'm not surprised an amendment wouldn't even get onto the floor because you're just not going to have constituents. As much as people are frustrated with the amount of money in politics, it's not first on their list of things that they're going to vote for. One thing I'm really curious about this election cycle is uh, this Times piece is fascinating with the amount of money in the few families, and yet you look at all the money being spent and all the money spent in the 2014 cycle, and yet you have an electorate that is going after Donald Trump, Carly Fiorina, and I mean in terms of support. <coughs> so not necessarily following the big money, even though obviously Donald Trump is self-funding. So you have this kind of, you know, discrepancy between where this big money is supposed to go. They were talking about Scott Walker for a long time. Right. And, you know, the establishment no, right. just isn't getting at the national Th there's level. There's a real danger here because at some point you hit a point of no return where there's so much money in the system and the system gets written to cater to those moneyed interests that at some point it will become impossible to un to change that dynamic. I mean, if, if everything gets catered towards that, that top end group, how do you fix the system? Real short time, 10 seconds. Where do you think those big checks get the best return on their investment? Local, state, national elections? All three, <laughs> all three. I mean, it, it points to, as far as I'm concerned, it's legal, but it's almost corrupting the system. If, if we want to know why we can't get anything done in terms of guns and why Obama's hands are tied, I mean, I wonder why these families are giving the money up, Richard. I, I guess it's just their civic duty. They're altruists. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. I one, mean, come yeah, on. Last point. Yep. Last, one last point. The Citizens United case, which opened the floodgates of money into, into campaigns, was decided five to four. That's why it's so important who we elect as president, because he or she is going to appoint, uh, with the consent of the Senate, going to appoint, nominate the sub next Supreme Court justices who may just reverse mm -hmm. that 5-4 to get rid of Citizens United. A single vote. Uh, that's what could possibly change how we finance campaigns. Thank you very much, Congressman. I appreciate Pleasure it. Pleasure to be with you. Absolutely. When we come back, everybody, we're going to take you to City Field for a report 
on game four of the Mets. And believe it or not, if they win tonight, they clinch. Believe it. Yes, I believe it. Stay with us.